everybody, welcome to this Studying at SUSS webinar. Today with me is Dr. Eugene Chu, who is head of the program. Welcome, Eugene. Hello, hello. Thank you. So, Eugene, I understand you have a very interesting program going on at uh, SUSS with the Bachelor of Sports and Physical Education. Perhaps you could just take some time and bring us through this program. And then afterwards, we could also talk to Hafiz and Ratna, who have both, uh, well, Ratna has gone through the program and graduated. And then uh, Hafiz is in the middle of it. Uh, and then they can share with us a little bit more later. So I'll hand this time over to you, Eugene. Okay, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Now, um, what I'm covering today is a uh, very key information. Uh, for those who will be watching this uh, this video and this webinar. Um, first is a quick facts by SSS, and then uh, I'll touch on some overarching, overarching information about the Bachelor of Sports and Physical Education uh, with minor program. In short, we use the word uh, BSE program, right? Uh, where to find uh, more detailed information, I will, I will direct you to that. And of course, the, some key features of studying part-time in SUSS which I think uh, a lot of uh, young athletes may be interested in, in looking at it, yeah. Okay, this is the overarching uh, information. Uh, some people uh, don't know what is SUSS or where is SUSS, or is SUSS a uh, national university in that sense? I mean, uh, funded by the Ministry of Education. Yes, it is, right? SUSS is a sixth uh, so-called national university or what is called correctly termed as autonomous university. Just like NTU, NUS, SMU, SUTD, and SIT. So if the figures are there, you can see for yourself. Uh, and we have five schools. Okay, five schools, uh, schools are listed there. Uh, the Bachelor of Sports and Physical Education uh, is under the SR Northern School of Human Development, right? Okay, admission information uh, you can actually gain from the get it from the SUSS website. Uh, in the website, you will basically look at the uh, under part-time or full-time program. You can see on the on the tab there, right? And of course, you can also see uh, other information specific to the Bachelor of Sports and Physical Education uh, under the website. Let me go to the website live now and then kind of do a, a quick a quick demo, right? A quick demo on uh, where to where to find the information. Okay, so. Okay, this is the live website now. All right. So if you are, if you look at this information here, uh, you can see uh, part-time programs. All right. And admission information, you can see from here. You can see a drop down. All right. You can find what is the eligibility criteria, tuition fees, scholarship, sponsorship, financial aids, and other information here. Now, if you go to uh, the full-time program, you'll find some same, similar information, but you also see other full-time programs. Now, for the BSC, BSE uh, program is under here. If you look at view all part-time programs, you can see all of them here. But even goes directly to the program, you can just type sports because the name has the word sports in there. Then you can go straight to the program and if you click on it, It'll give you the details of the BSc program. Anything that is line, if you line, you can click, you can go in and see. Okay, you can see more about the fees. And then if you scroll down, you have all the information here on the program structure. Right, I will, I will touch on this later in the slides. And then you have all the courses listed here. Right, and of course, the list of minor courses. Later, I'll touch on this as well. So, the website has a whole vast uh, array of information which you can actually look at. All right, so I'll, I'll stop sharing this one and I'll go back to the slides. Okay, the minimum criteria is listed there. You can find it on the website. I just want to highlight uh, a couple of things. Um, it requires you to have be 21 years old. All right basically because uh, it's a part-time program and you're expected to have at least four years of work experience. Uh, NS uh, uh, counts for that as well, uh, national service. All right, now the two years of full-time experience can be uh, any, any, any area, but of course you have sport related, then it's good, yeah? And 
for the related for the diploma, this is the minimum criteria. That means any program, any any person who meets this, uh, this minimum criteria can be considered as eligible. Okay, but our BSE program has additional degree specific requirements. Because of the nature of the program, we look for people with sport related diploma. Okay, if you are A level holder, uh, you should have some demonstrated sports competency, like representing the college, IT, or even uh, polytechnic in a uh, university in a, a sport. Right? If you are a national athlete, not an issue. You already fulfill the criteria already. Right. So the next two bullet point is really about the information you need to submit. Right, and uh, you have specific information on the website. The forms can be uh, downloaded from there as well. Okay. Now I'm going through the, the structure of the program uh, to give you an idea of what you are getting into if you want to pursue a degree, uh, this uh, Bachelor of Sports and PE. The structure has uh, gone through uh, several uh, uh, revision and, and changes. So what I'm showing you now is really a, a peek into the future uh, that will happen in 2021. Okay, uh, Ratna and, and Hafiz will know that they didn't look like this. Uh, what they did is not looking like this. A little difference is in the general electives. Okay, so in terms of green color, you can see the major, okay, major courses. We use this term called credit units or CU to measure uh, the the amount or number of courses okay, that a person need to complete. So a total of 130 CUs or credit units. Okay, and that 130 CUs uh, comprises major 80 CU, minor 40 CU, and then the SUSS core extend CU. Okay, from the major, you can is subdivided into different uh, categories. The uh, one you should look at first is the core, school core. Okay, the school core has 10 CU, and then the major core has 40, the major electives have 15, and then the general electives have 15 CU. Now, what are all these terms, right? I will, I will just quickly explain after that, after this. Huh? Um, so, in the next slide, we'll show you uh, the a mind map of the entire structure, what you saw just now in the previous slide, but with the courses, the name of the courses listed as well. Okay, on the right side, the blue color ones, you can see that uh, over here, okay, the blue color ones, they are the compulsory courses, okay, compulsory core courses. They form the essential basic or fundamental knowledge that uh, a graduate should have. Okay, you can see all these uh, sports science and also sports studies courses. The school core and the, uh, and the university core, the SUS core, form part of the compulsory as well. Now, on the left hand side, Okay, they are all electives. The green color ones are the sport and PE electives. Then the orange color ones are the outdoor education electives. And the two purple ones, they are also elective, but it's deemed as quite interesting and essential, especially the BSE 255. If you are looking at going to be a, a teacher, a PE teacher or a sport instructor, or even an outdoor education facilitator or instructor, they should pursue this first uh, to BSE 255. BSE 391 is an internship course, it's a one semester course, allows the, the student to go into a sport related or fee related uh, car organization and have an experience uh, in the workplace environment to learn more beyond what is in the classroom and in the course and also to apply some of what, what is being learned uh, in the program and to the workplace uh, situation. Okay. And then you can see the uh, yellow color minor program. There, there are 40 CUs here, which you can pick from the minor program that you have declared or you choose to uh, select, okay? Now, the new thing that will happen is the general elective courses. 15 CUs is, is uh, dedicated to that. It basically allows the student to broaden, to broaden the uh, experience and knowledge base beyond the program itself, beyond the discipline. So a student can go and take a course from, let's say, uh, analytics, okay, data analytics. Okay, you can, you can choose if a course there is offered as a general elective. But also note that the three courses under uh, the BSE, 255, 257, and 259, they are all here actually. 
they are also categorized as elective. So a BSc student can still choose uh, the, the elective, general elective courses from the category of general the three courses. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated, but uh, not to worry. And when you are here, we can explain to you how to really uh, choose the courses properly. But a current student will know what I'm talking about when we talking about uh, course selection or course registration. Okay. Okay. It's just the end one. Let's go next one. Okay. So the school core courses. Okay. As I mentioned, there are different categories. The reason why their school core is listed here to, uh, to allow the student has some kind of a uh, foundational knowledge that is cutting across uh, all students in the school. Okay, these are all relevant uh, to the study of uh, sports and physical education. Okay, the general electives I mentioned earlier. Okay, for, for them to for students to be able to uh, uh, choose courses, uh, allow them to broaden their knowledge. Okay. And of course, the minor courses, uh, once you choose from a, a list of uh, minor programs. Now, just now I drink, and the website, I showed you a list from uh, the, the, web, the BSE program web page, right? So you can actually look into that, that web page itself and you can see the various minor courses. Now, I want to highlight this because to me, I think this is the strength of the program, of the BSE program. Is in other words, when you finish at, with this degree, you graduate with this degree, you have a minor program under uh, your, your, your belt. Okay, that means you can actually widen your career choices. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are your your BSc graduate, but you have a minor in marketing, right? So it actually enlarge your, your skills base, your skills and your knowledge uh, beyond the discipline itself. An employer who is keen on hiring somebody to do some marketing, but with the background and uh, base of uh, sports and PE, then you are the guy uh, that they may be looking for. Now, if you are looking at the, your newer or emerging jobs like um, data analytics, uh, especially in online shopping, online platforms where people are analyzing uh, big data, so if you are keen on looking into sports marketing uh, uh, career and things like that, you may want to do a minor in that area. So to me, the minor program allows you to broaden the scope of your career choice. And, and to me, it, it is a real strength of the program. Okay. SUS core courses, these are aimed at broadening perspective of SUSS uh, students, uh, graduates. Okay. So the idea is uh, for you to do some courses as you can see the examples here, they are very, very uh, uh, different from, from a sports science or sports studies uh, courses that we, we offer under the program, right? So it allows you to do something that's really different from this. Okay, other key information, the program minimum you can complete is three years. You want to go faster, you can't because uh, there's a minimum uh, years you need to finish. Okay, and it's a maximum of eight years. Because it's a part-time program, it allows you more time. You recognize people uh, who may be working or have family commitments or have sporting commitments like uh, youth athletes, that you may need more time to finish, right? And allow you to defer, take a gap year or things like that, okay? Now the study timing, the class timing is 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. is in the evening. So uh, well, well suited for working people holding a job well suited for athletes who are training in the morning, maybe in the in the afternoon. Uh, I know some athletes train at night. Okay, so therefore you, you can consider this as well. Uh, Sunday and Saturdays are rare, usually for makeup classes uh, due to public holidays or school uh, campus closure days. Now per course, you have six sessions. Now, before the COVID situation is six face-to-face -face sessions, now we can have online classes as well, okay? So it runs on a uh, six to eight weeks uh, per course. That is usually what we consider one term, okay, one term. Uh, and the university divide the, the academic year into two semesters. And January semester, July semester, and then within general semester, you divide the two terms, term one, term two. So each course run across each term. So the term one course will run from beginning of term one to the end of term one. And then the next one will go 
uh, term two and, and then and so on. Okay. So where are the courses conducted? These are the uh, different places. Uh, SUSS is now uh, renting the SIM uh, facilities. SIM is was where it comes from. Uh, SUSS come from, and the whole campus belongs to SIM. SIM is a is a company or holding group uh, that originally SUSS uh, was called SIM University or UNISIM. Okay, so we are renting the facilities there and we use other facilities there until the time where we have our own campus. Okay. All right, other key information, tuition fees, this is what it costs to, to study uh, the entire program. If you're a Singapore citizen, SC, that stands for Singapore citizen, the entire program costs about $22,000. Okay. Now, if you are a mature, mature student, uh, 39, above 39 years means 40 and above. Uh, you can see that the fee is significantly lower, right? This may not appeal to youth athletes, but for athletes who are who have retired or anybody who's in the, the more senior years, more mature years. Okay, the, the various uh, uh, costing there is uh, for PR also and without government subsidy, what it would look like. So for SUSS students under uh, under the government subsidy, the, the fees is in the 22K range here. Yeah? Now, if I want to look at it, not by program, that means not the cost for the entire program, it's cost by cost payment, okay? So each cost is usually five CU. Of course, there are 10 CU courses. There are also 2.5 CU courses. But each course is usually five CU. So in, in most of the, in fact, almost 100% of the courses in the BSc program is five CUs, right? except for the university course, some are 2.5. So each course is about thousand, just above thousand dollars for each uh, course in, in polytechnic or in some other university, the term uh, module is used. So course is equal to module. Huh? So don't be confused. So it's about $1,000, all right? So let's say if you are taking two courses in one semester, and then let's say another course in the term, uh, in, in another semester, you are taking a total of three courses in a year, let's say, uh, you, think that you only pay for three courses. <clears throat> okay, it's the, the payment is by cost. And of course, you, you there is a maximum number of courses you can take per semester. The maximum is four. Okay, so in a year, the maximum is eight, eight courses. You want to overload, that means you can take more than four, usually about five per semester. Then you need to seek permission from the head of program. In this case, for the BSc program, it's myself, yeah? Okay, so that's some good information you need to know. But if you are not really <clears throat> thinking about the BSc program, you may have other plans. All right, you don't want to study uh, a degree in uh, sports and physical education. You want to do something else, let's say for example, early childhood uh, uh, program. There are other part-time programs in uh, SUSS. Okay, you can go to the website, you can see all the listing there just now where I show you, okay? Of course, there are full-time programs. In other words, let's say you decided not to, uh, at the end of your athletic career, uh, you decided to, okay, uh, go full-time study. You can also go full time study in SUSS. There are nine programs, uh, full time programs in SUSS. Okay. So that's uh, so much I want to cover, uh, not to load, overload you with information. Uh, most of this information can be found on the SUSS website. Something to note also is that for the BSc program, there's only July intake. Some other programs may have a January intake. Right. So you can apply for the program. Any time, any time of the year, but if you want to get into uh, the July intake for next year, for example, 2021, the application ends on 31st of 2021. Okay, so I think that's all I want to share at this point. Yeah, thank you. Let me stop share here. Thank you very much, Eugene. Yeah. How old is this program? Um, the program started in 2015, yeah, 2015, so it's about five, five years old, I mean, to six years old, yeah. And how many students 
do you have in each cohort so far? Um, we have so right now the seventy one oh, uh, at the at the point of January this year, uh, seventy one who have graduated. Okay, within the cohort, I have uh, two hundred over. Yeah, two hundred over students. Yeah, right now. Yeah. The other thing that stood out for me was the length of the program. You mm. said it goes from anywhere from three years all the way up to eight years, mm. which is mm. a significant advantage. Mm. Yeah. I'm just curious, do most people complete it nearer three years or mm. the opposite? Mm. Okay, uh, for, based on the uh, 71 that graduated, I, I, we looked at the what's the uh, average. The average is actually 3.75 years. The mean, yeah, but the median is actually four. The median is four. So right, right now, I think he completed in four years, yeah. Um, so the, as I mentioned earlier, the number of courses maximum is actually four per semester, so eight per year. So you calculate right, 130 CUs, uh, as five CUs per course. Uh, you roughly have about about four point something per semester. I think the other significant mm. advantage of the BSE is that you can pay per course. Mm. Mm. I think That's right. that must be mm. unique in Singapore's context. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it allows a lot of flexibility. Uh, I think it stems from the, the fact that the SVSS was originally catering to working adults, uh, so part-time basis, and they recognize that working adults' uh, commitment changes. You know, it's not constant, right? So the commitment changes, and if it in that particular semester you can't commit to let's say four courses, right? You can only commit to one because let's say your your your, ba like your baby is coming, <laughs> or or your boss tells you that okay this is a major project, right? Uh, for for this part of the year, and you have to commit uh quite a lot of time to it, then you know in advance, then you basically plan for it, and you say okay I can only handle one course, so you pay for one course. Yeah, of course, there are some admin fees that is uh, not so significant that you pay. Yeah, but the main bulk of the cost is actually the cost fee. Yeah. I highlight this because yeah. for the other universities, you pay by semester and, mm. and you just pay that amount regardless of the number of right. modules that you take. Right. So this yeah. is unique to SUSS. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The other question I had was about the <laughs> compulsory courses. Do you need to be strong in science and mathematics to, to do well in those compulsory courses? Um, we have students who actually come from humanities background. Uh, they manage, right? They manage. Uh, the mathematics, for example, biomechanics, okay? It, it's not heavy on calculation. Uh, it's not the whole, you know, complex uh, formula that you, you handle. Uh, usually, you learn by looking at uh, concepts and then principles, uh, and then of course there are there are some calculation, but not that uh, a university student cannot handle. Yeah, I think the other thing that also stood out for me was that students have to be at least twenty one years with mm. work experience. Mm. So you must have a very interesting cohort with people from different backgrounds. Yeah. What are the backgrounds like? Yeah, we do, we do. <clears throat> this program actually was originally uh, started because uh, Ministry of Education under, <clears throat> under PESTA. Huh? Uh, they say wanted to upgrade the PE teachers uh, to hold a degree for those who are diploma holders. That's the origin uh, genesis of this program. But uh, ever since when the time it started, the, the cohort uh, profile has changed. Uh, we have people from coming from uh, fitness industry. We have people coming from uh, coaching. Uh, we have people who are in the in the uniform uh, uh, services like armed forces and uh, police who wants to upgrade to a degree. Uh, they they do come here because the portfolio do uh, involve things like uh, physical training and things like planning for physical training, training people in uh, in in this area. Uh, we also have people from the private sector who are, conduct, are doing programs for young kids, uh, physical activity programs. We have, you have students from special education schools who are wanting to learn more and then implement PE programs there. Um, so and we have people in retail, but sports retail marketing, 
uh, yeah, they are here to study as well. So you can see the, 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 the diversity of the students uh, coming from different areas. Uh, yeah, the, I must say that the, the, the cohorts, uh, each cohort are quite interesting yeah, in terms of the, the profile, uh, the different background they come from. But it, it, it actually called, it adds to the, the, the richness of the learning because people will share from different backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to comment that that would make the learning experience quite interesting for Yeah, people. yeah, that's right. Embarking on a course of study while working can be a huge challenge. What are some of the challenges that students face taking this course that you have noticed over the last five years? Uh, time management is an issue uh, because uh, it's part-time, right? especially when you're holding a full-time job. So time management is a skill that needs to be acquired quite quickly. Uh, the other one is initial, uh, is initial challenge will be getting used to the university system. Okay, when I say system, it could mean the, the IT system that's being used, the learning platform, we use the Canvas learning management system, uh, how to submit assignments, how to you know, look at your grades, things like that. And then the requirements for the university in terms of uh, what is uh, the assignment constitute, the academic rigor, you know, things like make sure you submit assignment and write things that, that does not uh, encroach on the issue of plagiarism. You need to rephrase things, you need to cite uh, sources well. Uh, these are some of the things that they, they get, need to get used to at the university level kind of uh, education. Uh, other than that, uh, is uh, basically learning, uh, how learning how to learn, learning how to learn. Uh, and because of the compact nature of our, uh, of our system, I mentioned earlier that it's a term. Each course run in one term. Each term is six to is eight weeks. Okay, so within eight weeks, you've got to complete a number of assignments, usually a two mini assignment and one major assignment or written exam. So within eight weeks, you have to complete that. So because of the compactness, right, then your, your, the, your discipline in terms of studying and the time management must be there. Uh, so I think that is one of the major challenge. I think later the, the two chaps here will share some of that. Uh, but uh, that is one of the key challenges. But it is also an advantage because you can finish the course within that short period of time, right? Uh, and then you, you do away with that learning and then you go on to the next one, yeah. I think the other thing you highlighted as a strength of your program is the ability to take a minor in data analytics or marketing or psychology. What have been the more popular minor uh, minors that people have chosen? Okay, now before last year, that is 2019, um, the students either take the management minor or the psychology minor. It was prescribed that way, okay, either or. Uh, then last year, the university uh, decided that uh, allow, to allow students to choose a minor of their interest. Okay, the idea is that they will be uh, selecting something that is, uh, they feel passionate about or is part of the career plan, a uh, long-term career plan, and allows for a cross, more cross-disciplinary uh, type of uh, uh, journey, instead of restricting to just, let's say, uh, psychology or uh, management, allows them a wider choices, wider choice. So I think it's a good move. Uh, so it allows for a, a broader, a broader uh, choices, of, uh, of a career they can pursue, yeah. The other thing was your SUSS core courses. Mm. The aim is to broaden people's perspective. Yeah. But do you also get reactions to these courses? Do people <laughs> say, why are you wasting my time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's quite normal. <laughs> Our 1,000 students, I'm sure a, there are some who, who think that way, yeah. right? So... Uh, maybe later, uh, maybe Ratna right can comment uh, about this. Uh, I think it's a good thing though, you know, it, I think <laughs> modeling perspective is always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that we are not just, you know, one 
one track minds. I think so too. I mean, I mean nowadays you, you go to any work, workplace or any work environment, you know, uh, a problem that occurs, uh, and you want to solve a particular problem, uh, the solution may not rest in your area of discipline. It may rest somewhere else, you know, and having a bit of knowledge of that, you may not be able to do it using that knowledge, or at, at least you know where to find the solution. You know, it, it leads to an opening. You know, opening and you go to somebody who's really in that discipline, then you can work together. You know, so it's important uh, to broaden your, your horizon in that sense. Yeah. I just found it interesting that, you know, somebody who has a lot of sports background, sports science background, <laughs> suddenly having to read about history may come as a shock. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, a, it's selected from a basket of uh, courses, so we are not restricted. You can choose from a basket of courses. I have just one last question before I hand it to my colleague, Sining. Um, I think you hinted about a new campus in the future. Can you talk a little bit about that without uh, leaking? I think that's a, a well-kept secret that uh, Ministry of Education has. <laughs> but uh, now what I meant was that uh, up to uh, at this point, at this point, uh, we do not have any uh, campus of our own. We are actually renting uh, the SIM campus. But of course, there are limitations to that. As you see the venues that we conduct our courses, yeah. uh, but most of it is still on the campus. Uh, a few of them are off-site. Uh, I think the, the question of where is the new or when is it, then uh, it's still a, a kept secret. Okay, okay. I shall not bring <laughs> Official Secrets Act. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Xining, over to you so that uh, we can get Ratna and uh, Hafiz to share their experience with us. All right, um, so I'll be asking Hafiz and Ratna some questions. So the first question is regarding how your life as an SUSS student was like or is like currently for Hafiz. So uh, maybe right now you can go first. So you graduated from SUSS last year, right? So what was your daily schedule like in school? All right. So actually, right, uh, uh, my so-called daily schedule has not differ a lot from when I was an athlete until I was uh, working as a PE lecturer and until now actually. It's always uh, when I'm schooling, it was uh, school, after school is training. And then now that I'm, uh, I'm working, it's working and then training, uh, I mean coaching now uh, since I stopped playing already. So um, these are the, the, the um, time management that I, I have to, to, to really, really plan my, my time ahead. And um, I don't think, I think Hafiz will, will share the same thing uh, because uh, she is playing and he's training almost every day and I'm coaching every day. So it is like, uh, uh, it's a normal thing uh, from where we are back in school and, and we are from the same school. We're from Nanyang Poly last time. And then we pr proceed uh, to, to, to playing after that. And um, I think there's not much difference from being a, 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 a last time when we are schooling and now we are f furthering our uh, um, education in the university. So it's still a lot of time management, yeah. So you sort of built on that habit and brought it on after you graduated. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay, Correct, thank yeah. you. Uh, how about Hafi? So how is your daily schedule like right now while you're still studying? Okay, so uh, my typical day will be like okay, I have trained right now during COVID. Uh, I had I'm having training in the morning, so schools at night will be easier. But uh, before COVID, it was always in the evening, starts at five, and I usually finish at around six thirty, six forty five. So uh, the class will be at seven, so I had to rush. But the good thing is, yes, I'm gonna miss the the maybe like 20 minutes of the first part. But um, it's, I think it's a, your own responsibility to inform the lecturer that you'll be late. Okay, another good thing about uh, SUSS, they have these uh, classroom recordings. So whatever you miss in the, the 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you can review it back uh, when you get home. So yeah, that's, that's how it's like uh, for, for my classes and my trainings right now. Can I just ask, was the recording also done even before COVID-19? 
Ah uh, yes. Yep. There. It was done. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, that's great. So it can... was done since it started. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a standard feature. Uh, all the lectures in the in the classroom or seminar rooms we call it. Uh, there is a camera that will record what is being presented. Yeah. So I guess it also takes discipline to review it. If it's recorded but nobody reviews it, then it'll go to waste, right? That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so to add on to what Eugene introduced in his presentation previously, how did the school support you as a student athlete? So Ratna, you want to go first? Um, I think for me, it was quite uh, easy because I have already finished. I mean, I re retired a few years before I start uh, 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 my school. Um, just that I think... Uh, like Hafi said, it's quite flexible. The onus is on you to inform um, your lecturer that you're going to be late, uh, you cannot make it for class. Um, and the good thing is, uh, I think most of the lecturer, I think if not all, are quite understanding of uh, of the students, especially in, in our course, because we are sports people. We are from the sports industry. We have coaches, uh, we have fitness trainers, uh, we have um uh, people with uh, background from special education. So, uh, and we we are part timers. You see, so they are bound. We are bound to miss a few lessons here and there. And um, we we and the good thing is we can catch up like like uh, you know the recordings and also our classmates. You know, um, they they are quite helpful. My my during my my classmates are, are amazing people. They will fill me up in with with what I've missed. Have you ever had uh, a case where you had to rearrange your exam dates? Uh, thankfully, uh, I do not have to do that. Uh, actually, I work all the other things around my, my school and my exams because uh, I also, uh, my working part, uh, I mean, uh, I'm teaching at uh, IT College East. My bosses have been, been very uh, understanding and supportive. Uh, they, they are quite uh, uh, supportive in the sense that uh, I could go off early from work when there's an exam. I could take a few days off from work to prepare for my exam. So uh, it has been a blessing so far. Yep. Then can, can I add on about the exam part? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, for me, there are a few occasions where my exam clashes with uh, my games. And uh, I think the, the advantage of being in SUSS is that if you are not able to attend the exam, uh, you are allowed to reseat it the next semester. And then you don't have to go through the whole, uh, the whole course or module again. You don't have to do the, the, uh, the small compartments of assignments. You just need to reseat for the exam. So that's less than uh, an advantage of being an HSS student. Uh. Yeah. System is such that a student who uh, basically do not attend or cannot attend an exam, um, he basically is considered withdrawn from the course, but he is uh, able to finish the earlier assignments uh, with a pass, uh, pass marks, uh, and he can reset the final uh, assessment, which is the exam, or a final component of the assignment. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a flexibility that they get. In that sense, defer the final assessment. Yeah. yeah. Also, earlier, just to add on, the, uh, attendance is not compulsory, except for certain courses. There are certain aspects is compulsory. Uh, let's say for lab work, uh, some data need to be collected and things like that. Those parts are compulsory. Yeah, uh, some other courses that are not BSE courses, they, they do define some some courses as compulsory. But on, in general, uh, uh, attendance is not compulsory. So you catch up with classroom recordings, but that's that's not the best thing we know. Yeah? Education and learning takes place where people interact, interact with each other, interact with uh, the lecturer. Uh, there is uh, merit in uh, engaging uh, one another. So although it's not compulsory, we encourage uh, full full participation and attendance. So I guess the flexibility of this program is one of the biggest <coughs> considerations for most students. Um, Hafiz, so 
why did you choose this program and how did you come across it in the first place? Um, I think it's about, uh, it's relatable to what I do and to what I have always been wanting to do since I started my diploma in sports and wellness management. Uh, I want to be, in, after I retire, I want to be still in the sports industry. And one of them is to be, to be teaching physical education or even to, like my minor is um, into management. So maybe uh, managing a, a sports team. So, um, and all the courses, the modules, uh, most of them are very relatable to what I'm doing right now. For example, sports safety, sports injury. Uh, it's like um, combining your theory and practical together. The best part is you are um, learning the theory in school. The next day you go training, you can apply it and you can say, oh, okay, this is the correct way to do it actually. You know, you might be uh, playing for 10 years, but you don't know the thing you are doing is right or wrong. So going through this course uh, allows me to broaden my um, knowledge on things like that. Yeah. Thank you, Hafiz. And Ratna, so how did you come across this program and why did you choose to do it? Um, yeah, I think uh, I've waited for this program for a long time, actually. Um, there, there has been option for me to, to go overseas to studies. But uh, again, I, I think considering the cost, uh, you know, and, and I'm starting to build my family, you know, uh, that was, uh, was out of the question. But when uh, I found out that uh, SUSS, uh, the other, no, I came in where he's still called Unisim, uh, decided to launch this. And it's very um, apt for me as a, a physical education lecturer. Um, I, I, I jump into it because uh, this is something I do on a daily basis, like what Hafiz said, um, you know, uh, teaching, teaching, coaching. Um, and to me, knowing the science of it, what's going on it, it is also helpful um, that's why uh, one of the course like the sport sports biomechanics that's one of the the course which I, I until now I still use it because uh, coaching I need to take videos of it I need to to really fine-tune what is going on and and whatnot so uh, it, it, every, it just fall into places and and this is really uh, the course that I think I, I would have taken uh, rather than other uh, courses from other, uh, other universities. Yep. And you mentioned that you actually briefly considered studying overseas, right? Yep, yep, I did actually. Uh, but uh, again, uh, it's not cheap studying overseas. Uh, and, um, and I'm not sure that, you know, uh, whether my uh, I could put up, you know, sustain my, my, my uh, studies overseas. Uh, so when SUSS came along and uh, also thankfully, uh, I got a lot of uh, uh, support from my, my employee, employer, sorry. They, they actually uh, uh, provide me with financial assistance to, to, to continue with the, the course. And um, it, it actually put my, my uh, financial worries behind so I could just concentrate on the, on the studies. Yep. Thank you. Um, Hafiz, did you consider studying overseas or in other institutions before you finally decided on SUSS? Yeah, actually, uh, I applied for NTU uh, before I got into the interview, but I was uh, rejected because one of the questions they asked me was about how do I manage uh, studying and uh, playing soccer? So I think uh, it's a blessing in disguise because I think if I will be in NTU, I won't be who I am right now to play soccer and expand, extend my career. So when SUSS, this course came out, I think it's, it's the, the perfect, uh, perfect course to, to be in because of the flexibility of how it's a part-time course. Yeah. So the timing was right. You yes. found it yeah. <laughs> at the end. Yeah, correct. Yeah, um, Eugene mentioned some students actually face some time management issues and maybe some students also needed extra time to get used to this whole new university system. So what challenge did the two of you face balancing your studies and your all your other commitments and how did you overcome these challenges? Uh, Hafiz? Yep. So um, I think my advice is when you, you are, it's about adaptation. 
I mean, you should start with, uh, uh, don't try to start with four modules per sem. Just try to, to take um, one or two and see how, how, how it affects your work or how you can cope. And then slowly, once you get the hang of it, and then you can manage properly your time at work and your school time, and then you slowly, you know, every sem you increase. Yeah, so the most important thing is to not let it affect your work, your full-time work. So it's about uh, prioritizing uh, what you need to do and managing your courses efficiently. I think I will agree with Hafiz, uh, you know, because um, it was a culture shock for me when I started school. Uh, I, I graduated from Poly in 2001 and 15 years later, I started again. And um, seriously, sitting in an exam hall again is uh, is scary. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you have to, to take it slow, like um, Hafiz advice, take it take, one or two modules or two or three modules first, um, which uh, I wish I had taken the advice then, but uh, I started off with four modules and it was, uh, I, I was saying, what am I doing? But, uh, but I, I slowly I managed to, to, to uh, acclimatize or adjust, adapt to, to the, the learning pace. Um, and and um, it, to me, it takes uh, some getting used to. Uh, you have to give yourself that time, you have to to uh, be a, a positive, and a, you, you need to set a po positive mindset, and and um, you know you have to change your 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 habit a bit. But I think it's it's worth it. It's really worth it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing. I think uh, many youth athletes and senior athletes would find your advice very very useful for their. Um, education pathway options. So I'll pass the time back to you. Hopefully, Les. hopefully. Yeah. Ratna and Hafiz, thank you for sharing very honestly about uh, some of the challenges <laughs> that you all have gone through uh, embarking on a course of studies. Oh, thank you for having us. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're most welcome. Yeah, and especially embarking on a course of study after 15 years, right? Or 10 years, 15 yeah. years for you right now. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge challenge. Yep. Um, yeah. So thank you very much also to Eugene. Thank you for sharing uh, details of the program. And I'm like, I echo what Sining says. Uh, I hope that uh, youth carded athletes and even senior carded athletes out there <coughs> will appreciate the, the time that you have spent to share your journey. Mm. Mm. Hopefully people are also inspired to walk that same journey that you have done and take up the challenge of studying and training and working, all working at the same time. Yeah. It's not easy, but I think worth it. Thank you for the time. Uh, feel free to approach our uh, office that the listed down there earlier. And also, uh, maybe if you're a youth athlete under NYS SRI, uh, feel free to approach uh, yourself as the as the field to approach you, and then you can connect them to me personally. Uh, I'll be more than happy to talk to youth athletes if you, are, you really want to have more in-depth discussion uh, and uh, allay some of the fears or just talk through some of the issues they may face. Uh, I, I make myself available uh, you know, to, uh, through yourself, uh, Ashley. Yeah. Thank you, too. Okay, for all of you out there who have been watching this, thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.